Hello, my podcast family. It is your podcaster, Helen, coming to you on this fantastic Thursday evening. I'm doing what? I am sitting on my front porch having a glass of wine and just thanking God for life. Um, I think I'm going to do this episode. It's going to be about mental health, your mental health. Uh, we talked about, I talked about mental health earlier, a couple of times already in some episodes, but I just want to like touch bases about mental health because your mental really matters. It matters what you put in your spirit and it matters what you do with it. Um, in this day and time in the world, is so much craziness going on. We just don't understand like how these horrible things that we read about in the news can happen but they happen it's life um in the bible and revelations it tells you about the last days and things that's coming about and you see so many of it fulfilling and so what we do we need to take care of our mental we need to um not only take care of our mental, we need to be what? Kind. I always talk about kindness because kindness matters. So as I am on my front porch, you will hear kids playing. It's summertime, of course. You'll hear cars pulling up. Um, you'll just hear a variety of different background noises. But this is where I like the podcast from, my front porch. It makes me happy being able to come out and sit on my front porch. It does something for my mental. And I will say during the COVID pandemic, we all isolated because we were so afraid of going out and getting COVID. And so we really isolated. I know I did. I isolated before COVID. And then when COVID came, it really threw me into a spiral. And I really started isolating even more. And so now I finally can say that I am at a place where I'm very peaceful and I don't let things bother me like they used to. It is what it is. My grandmother um, used to tell me, my grandmother, Catherine Doctor, she was um, my grandmother that I inherited through a marriage. Um, who I love dearly, so um, she's gone on to be with the Lord now, but she really taught me something, she's such a wise woman, and she really taught me about things that you have no control over. Her and my mom would say the same thing, you just don't have any control over, you can't worry. Um, but I would see my mom worry a little. Um, she would kind of like um, mask her pain she was going through like I do. Um, but my grandmother Catherine, she just seems to like, I don't care what it was, if I was at her house, and I have to speak on her now that I'm talking about it, if I was at her house and I'll be like, um, your grandson may have gotten itself in a tight situation, and she'll be like, well, what I need to do? And I would tell her what she needed to do, and she would do that, and she would come back in the house and... She would sit in her rocking chair and she would get her food and she would sit there and watch her favorite TV shows like nothing in the world mattered. And I love that spirit she had. And I said, oh my God, one day I hope that I can pick up this spirit that she has because she said, what'll be will be. And she was so right. And now that I've gotten a little bit older and I just understand how she felt, you cannot allow it to take your happiness or your joy you can only do what you can do so I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to mention her and just to speak on her because um, it matters I miss her and I love her dearly and I know she's with God because she was such a an amazing church going and live what she preached woman so with that being said, that's how I live now. It might come at me, but I do not allow it to take me, take over me anymore. One time I would get upset. I would just go just in a rant about whatever it was, but now I don't. And so that's when I'm, when I mean to tie all this in, you need to Think about the situation. If something chaotic happens, you need to process it and you need not to let it take over 
your emotions, to get you angry, to get you in a depressed space, and you just need to push past it. I mean, if you have to drive to the beach, if you live in an area where there's a beach, drive to the beach. The water is such a healing. For me, I love the water. Um, I have a water birthmark on the back of my thigh, and it is such um, a healing place for me if I can get to the water. If I'm really, really going through something, I don't care. I will drive to a beach and sit out there until I feel myself get centered again. So those are things that you can do. Drive to the beach, read a book. I love reading. I love writing. I am an author. Um, I love reading and writing. Um, not too many people can just pick up a tablet or an iPhone if you're writing something and just start writing and it pours out. But thank God I have that gift and it, it, it happens for me and I'm grateful for it. A lot of gifts um, is just manifesting now that I wanted to keep trapped. I did not want them to come out. And um, I guess I was suppressing them. And God tell you don't suppress the Holy Spirit. So I guess he means don't suppress your gifts as well. So um, you just have to find things that make you happy. And that's what I'm doing now. I just redid my bedroom. I put some curtains up and a new comforter and it just make my room feel happy. And that's what I need because where do we spend most of our time? In the room. You come home, you might go in the room, you lie down, you watch some TV, or you sit on your bed and watch some TV. So I've always done that. And that's something that I noticed when I was going through my bout of depression, I did not do. And I've always when the seasons change, the colors in my home, in my bedroom change. I always change my bedroom with the seasons and my bathroom. And that was something I noticed that I didn't do when I was going through my bout of depression. But now I see how God has healed me with the help of a village. I really do love my family so much and the friends that I have which isn't many, but I know that they pray for me and I am like in such an amazing space, amazing things are happening. And I want that for you guys out there in my podcast community. Um, share this, share it with the groups that we're in together in our podcast family, um, because somebody might need to hear this and it can help them. Um, realize what is going on, what they are not doing anymore. Rather, it be change your kitchen around. I love to cook. Um, finding kitchen rugs is really hard these days, and they're expensive. I think I'm in the, the old era because I'm like going to Walmart and I'm looking for where's the 397 rugs? <laughs> Those 397 rugs are gone. I don't ever think they're coming back, but I'm still looking for them. So I think um, I, I love to change my kitchen around. So I said, well, you know what? Go on Amazon or somewhere, find you some kitchen rugs. So those are things that you can do that makes you happy, that make you um, feel better in your home if you're having a difficult time with being in your home. I know sometimes I walk in the door and I'll be like, ugh, I'm home. But I know that I need to do something to make me feel like I'm happy to be home. And that's change it around, make it happy, put up a new picture. Or do something that helps your mental as well when you come in the house and you're somewhere that you really love to be so i'm realizing that um and i'm just enjoying life so this episode will be um watch what you used to do versus what you do now to help your mental because i did that today when um this morning when I got up, I was like, I got to change this room. I thought that, and then I saw a little bug, and I was like, oh, no. I'm, I'm going to buy a bed in a bag. <laughs> I need to change this room around, and I did, and it made me feel better. So I wanted to share that with my podcast family, and I want to also remember to tell you, remember, check on someone, whether it be a friend, a neighbor, a coworker, a homeless person on the street, a clerk in a store. Ask them how they're doing today. It's not going to hurt you to do that. Ask them, hey, how's your day going? They may need to vent. And if they do start venting, 
It's not going to hurt you if you're on your way home. Just stop and listen at what they have to say. Sometimes people may not have anybody to vent to, and you may be that person that God chose them to be able to vent to. So don't think that those extra five or ten minutes that you spend in the store listening to that person or even a coworker at work is going to hurt you. It's not. Because why? It could save a life. And why? Because it matters. And remember, it's summertime now. We see a lot of homelessness. People are out on the streets. And you may not have it every day to give them. I don't. But if you have a couple bucks, then you could just give it to them. It's hot now. They could buy a nice refreshing drink. If you don't trust them to give them the couple bucks. Hey, swing by a store if you're on a road that have a, a convenience store. Swing by turn back around and give them a nice refreshing beverage that could keep them cool and that could possibly save their lives. And I won't keep you long, but until next time, this is Helen from Helen's Podcast. You have a fabulous Thursday evening. And sorry about the little kids. They just happened to come out. <laughs> it was so quiet. My love, I'm in a bomb popsicle. So they can stay cool. So until next time, this is Helen from Helen's Podcast. You have a blessed day.